told me to talk okay, I just wanted to start by asking you to just introduce yourself and what you've been doing pretty much throughout your career. My name is Dr. Lenore Fulani. I am um, the founder of the best grouping of youth programs uh, and youth approaches in the country. Um, it's called the All Stars Project and we're here in New York City on 42nd Street. And uh, we provide free programming to young people that's based on a recognition that one of the reasons why our kids are not doing well in school and in life, which I think is as important even though that doesn't get talked about a lot, is because of the absence of opportunities for them to grow and develop and to be connected to the mainstream of New York City and our country. I'm also a political activist. I ran in 1988 and 92 for President of the United States as an independent. In 88 I made history. I was the first black and woman to get on the ballot in all 50 states. And I ran not because I thought that I could win the presidency, and like Obama did, and yay. Yeah. <laughs> I ran because I was looking to create what has become a significant movement in this country of political independents who don't like partisan politics, they don't like parties, they don't like the um, constant conflict and deadlock between the Democratic and Republican parties and are looking to have a voice in how things work in the country um, that allows for our democracy to expand and for ordinary people to be empowered. Thank you very much for that. Um, another question, why do you think it's important to be political? Well, I think it's important for ordinary people, um, people of color, white people, all people, <laughs> to have a say and control in how their lives are and how the environments that they live in operate and have institutions and opportunities to create things that speak in their own behalf, that represent them. A lot of the institutions, for example, um, in this country, initially black people weren't even allowed to participate in, but not just black people, women, white working class people, non-property owners, and so a lot of things got created that still exist, for example, like the two-party system, <laughs> that uh, represents basically institutions, but those interests are not the same as the interests of ordinary people. And so what I've dedicated my life to, along with the hundreds of people that I've worked with for the last 30 years, is creating new kinds of institutions that are, um, through which you're able to express what's best for um, you as ordinary people, what's best for groups of ordinary people, as opposed to the people who basically control and run everything. And the All Stars Project and the independent movement are expressions of that. Here at the All Stars, for example, I'm able to, and the people that work here, um, who I've um, worked with for a number of years, uh, and even new people coming on board who are doing a tremendously good job, we're able to do things and go places and work at approaches, work at developing approaches that are essential to the growth and development of young black kids. We're not constricted by the bureaucracy that is the Board of Education or the Department of Education or this, that, or the other. And I actually like Michael Bloomberg because I think he's tried to um, better manage the schools and I think that's the case, that he's been successful at that. But we're able to be innovative in ways that are extremely, extremely important if we're going to impact upon the lives of poor people and basically people who are outside of the mainstream. Okay, thank you. Um, last question. I know that you have been an inspiration to many, including myself. Like, but I'd like to know from you, what are the most things that you've done in your life that you felt you're very proud of and that have actually made differences in your what you're trying to fight for? I think the thing that I, well, the thing I like about my life is that I'm working things that I feel extremely nurtured by because it's doing what it is that I want to do. 
and I'm doing it with a lot of great people who are dedicated. We're probably all workaholics, <laughs> but we're creating something. I also watched my nieces and nephews, who I thought were going to follow in my footsteps. I stepped down with the first in my family to go to college. I watched them die from oh my um, mental illness, from drugs, from alcohol, from poverty, because I think all those things are about the poor. I thought they were going to be able to continue what it is that I have done and they weren't. And it's not just my nieces and nephews, it's just like, you know, hundreds of thousands of young people who just have not been able to live the lives that young people should be able to live. So I feel extremely gratified by not just creating opportunities for them to grow, but organizing them to help them to grow. And so there are young people around here um, and who I've met over the years and who I work with every day who themselves are participating in helping to create new ways of thinking in the world. I think it's so, one of the, when I just spoke some about the achievement gap, that's an adult issue, that's an educator's issue. The issue that kids have, in my opinion, is that they, their lives aren't working. They're not good. And it's not if all of them graduated from high school under the current circumstances, their lives would not be good. I think we should be much more concerned about the quality of young people's lives. The fact that I can speak to 13-year-olds who already know somebody who's dead, who's been arrested by the police, who live places where they don't have running water in the richest country in the world. The fact that that's going on, that's what I want to help them change. And in the process, they will embrace reading and writing and arithmetic and skywriting, whatever they want to do, if in fact we do something about their lives. I think it's outrageous that both young people in this country and around the world, um, and that people are living or barely living their lives. So to the degree that I can help create a world, an approach, a culture, a political movement that addresses that, um, it's worth it's worth being a workaholic. Okay. okay, thank you so much for doing this with me. I really Thank appreciate you, Tracy. It.